Well, hello, my fabulous fifth graders. This week, we started our discussion on the metric system converting from one unit to another. So I wanted to go over some basic facts that you guys know and just really solidify these points. We're going to start with place value chart because there's a lot of similarities between our metric system and our place value chart as we talked about this week. Now, looking at the number 25, we know that when we write it into our place value chart, we put a two in the tens place. We can represent this with two ten sticks. We also have our five in the ones place, and it just says, hey, we have five ones. We have our number 25. Now, we can also look at this in another way. We can look at it as ones. So I can say that I have 25 ones, right? And then that would be a different type of picture. We would have 25 individual little blocks. So there are different ways of looking at the same number. Let's look at 120. 120, we could say is 100, 100 block, right? As we picture it. And then two 10 sticks and zero ones. So we could break it apart like this. We could also look at it with 120 little blocks, right? That would be a lot of little blocks to put up there. But what if we looked at it by tens? Hmm, that's kind of different. We don't generally do this. So what would I say? Yeah, I could say how many 10 sticks make up 120 blocks, right? So we know that 10 10 sticks is 100 and two 10 sticks is 20. So I have 12 tens. 12 10 sticks make up 120 blocks. So I could say that 12 times 10 gives me 120. Very good. We know this stuff, right? Oh, let's bring in some decimals. We've been working on that for quite a while. Let's put in our place values, the tenths, we have our four, and then we have 12 ones, or one ten and two ones. Now, generally when we're thinking about decimals, we're thinking about money, right? That is the most common way we use decimals. So we could say that one ten is like one $10 bill, and our two ones are actually two separate dollar bills. And we have four tenths. What represents those tenths? Uh, yeah, that's right. It is dimes in our money system that represents these tenths. So we could have four dimes here. Now, we have our money all together. It's nice and organized. These look great. What if we had dimes, right? And I'm going to put my zero in the hundreds place because when we are talking about money, we need to include that hundreds place to represent cents, like a hundred, because it's all out of a hundred, right? So I'm going to put my zero in the hundreds place. Now, how many dimes would it take to create $12.40? So let's think about that. Hmm. 10 dimes is $1, right? So let's count out how many dimes. Well, if you look at your place value chart, you can see that there's 124. Hmm. Does it take 124 dimes to make $12.40? Let's check that out. Let's see, I have 124 dimes here, and I could write out that, let's see, 12 and 4 tenths times 10 gives me 124. That's correct. I know that if I multiply this number by 10, it just slides over to the left, and it gives me whole numbers. I'm going to move that decimal over one place value. Let's see, what else could we say? Well, we could say if I have 124 dimes, dimes are worth one, uh, one tenth. And so if I multiply those together, yes, I get 12 and four tenths. So when I multiply the whole number by one tenth, then it's gonna slide back on the place value chart to give me my 12 and four tenths. I could also say that this is like division, 124 divided by 10, because we are moving back a place value from the whole numbers. All right, good start. Now let's really get into that metric system. So here's the chart I made for you guys. And remember, looking at it, we have our um, big units over here on the left, as in like distances traveled by cars or the size of buildings, hallways, and then we have our um, our unit, our standard unit, which is our meter, like our meter stick that we use all the time. You measure doorways and lots of our shadows, lots of different things we've been using. 
And then we get into these smaller measurements. These are the decimeters. So if you look at that meter stick, those are the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 on it. And then our centimeters <clears throat> are the individual numbers. It takes 100 centimeters on our meter stick. And then the millimeters are those little tiny lines in between them. Okay, so we have this. We understand um, our metric system units separately, but when we're going back and forth, sometimes we can get a little confused. So if we use this chart, uh, it will help us figure it out. Just like a place value chart, we're going to align our numbers into each column, and each column can only hold one digit, right? So I'm going to do 25 meters, I find my meters position, and then I'm going to put my last digit in there, and my um, all the other digits are gonna go to the left since they are total meters. I have, it's a whole number. I have no decimals, no fractions of meters. So I'm going to put my 25 right there and I have my 25 meters, good. All right, now let's convert that to centimeters. So let's think about maybe going skiing, okay? And I'm standing in line to get on the lift and I'm waiting and the line is about 25 meters long. Well, as I'm waiting, I play around with some items in my pockets and I pull out some centimeter cubes, right? From like math class. So I pull out my centimeter cubes and I start to think, how many of these cubes would it take to get to the end of the line? So if I lined them all up, centimeter by centimeter by centimeter, how many would it take? Would it take more than 25 or less than 25? Yeah, it would take a lot more than 25, right? So I remember, that on our meter stick, those centimeters, there's a hundred of them. So I find my place value on my chart and I see that I am going, if I wanna talk about centimeters, I need to put in some place value holders here to mark it, right? So I'm gonna put my place value holders there and I notice that I would have to multiply times 10 and times 10 again. So that is um, 10 to the second power because we're multiplying it twice by 10. Now. When I do this, it's like multiplying 25 times 100, and then I get my 2,500 centimeters are in 25 meters. Pretty cool. Looks pretty easy with this chart, right? All right, let's try another one. So I am going to be going up a chairlift, and it is 638 meters long. I have it marked, I found my meters, I put in my 638, and now I'm just sitting on the chairlift, waiting to get up and waiting. So I start thinking about math, and I start thinking about really tiny things, like a grain of rice. Do you know a grain of rice? Um, the width is probably about a millimeter wide. So I start thinking, if I lined up grains of rice all along my chairlift um, line, all the way up to 638 meters, how many could I line up? Hmm. We could think about this. So we're gonna place it on our place value chart, right? How many millimeters does it take to get 638 meters? I think it's gonna be pretty big. What do you think? Yeah, so I find my millimeter, okay? And I am going to put in place value holders all the way up till I get to my meters, okay? Now that is three jumps, right? So that's times 10, times 10, times 10 and um, that's gonna be 10 to the third power, right? So 638 times 10 to the third power um, will give us what? Yes, good. So 10 to the third power is just 1,000. So 638 times 1,000, that's a lot of place value holders, but we can handle it. You've done this before. And if you look at our chart, we kind of have the answer written out for us, right? We have 638,000. That's a lot of rice, but it's fun to think about numbers while you're waiting for stuff. Let's go. So now we're at the top of the mountain and it is 1,750 meters back to the base. We have this nice trail, it turns, it swoops, it winds around, it looks like fun. 1,750 meters. That seems like such a far, far distance. However, we're gonna be traveling pretty fast and we're going downhill and it's almost like we're in a car. And most cars, 
are, um, they track this by kilometers. So let's kind of simplify this. And instead of saying all these meters, what if we decided to call them <clears throat> kilometers? So let's find our kilometers that's over here in this place value chart. And I can see right away, I have one kilometer. And then, but what do I do with the rest of the numbers? Well, that's pretty simple. So when we're looking at um, kilometers, we're just going to go back, right, to our meters. And when we go back on this place value chart, we're actually dividing, okay? So we're gonna divide by 10, and then divide by 10 again, and then divide by 10 again. So that's 10 to the third power. And when we do this, we are moving that place value, right? We're moving the place value. So again, we said that if we look at our chart, we know that we only have one decimal or one kilometer here. And so if we put a decimal right there, it shows us our answer. And when we look at it in um, an equation, we have 1,750 divided by 1,000 will give us 1 and 75 hundredths of a kilometer, which is, we could say, oh, it's almost two kilometers long. That would be a nice, easy way of looking at this big number. Now let's try some for yourself. So get a piece of paper, write down these two problems I have for you. We're going to do um, how many millimeters are in 45 meters and how many kilometers are in 3,200 meters. If you've got this and you want to do a challenge, uh, how many centimeters are in 43 kilometers? All right, so that 43 is kind of off our chart if you go back to look at it. And you can just click back, um, rewind, and use the place value chart for meters to help you convert these numbers. And I will see you guys very soon, um, hopefully on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, and uh, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Bye.